Yeah. And the best thing is, up next, Randy Orton wants to take his anger out on this crowd because he gets into the ring and he cuts probably the best promo that Randy Orton has ever cut. Or at least the best promo that Randy Orton has cut since his feud with Mick Foley because this was so passionate and so on point from an acting standpoint with the facial expressions, the body language, everything that we all know Orton's great at. Plus, there is that extra little bit of emotion that you normally don't get from him. He Dude. started this thing out ripping Kansas City and the Royals, ripping John Cena, and he was so adamant about the fact that the Kansas City Royals we're going to have to wait another 29 years. And then he said something about how everyone in the crowd was going to have to wait, was not going to see in their lifetime, the Kansas city Royals winning the world series. And the funny thing is he is from St. Louis. So I don't know for sure how loyal he is to the St. Louis Cardinals. But what I do know is that if he is from St. Louis, there's a pretty good possibility that if he's not a Cardinals fan, he probably is a Royals fan. And he's probably saying all this stuff on TV because he knows that it would make him a huge heel because this is such a hardcore baseball city. And this whole thing is going on with them being in the World Series and like this, just this little stuff, because I know that making fun of the the local baseball team is a huge heel move but he really harpered on it man like he was on the royals asses he really was but um well well first because I, i'm gonna go on for a little bit here so before i do do you have anything else you want to say about this segment before you give me the ball are you gonna only talk about orton because i haven't gotten to the point where cena interrupts him yet Okay, you know what, just just get everything out that you need to, because my points aren't really going to be emphasized on and on, I'll just, I'll just make that clear right now, so whatever else you want to say, I would prefer you do it now. All right, well, Cena does interrupt Orton, he stands up for Kansas City, and he says that Orton is really stupid because of the fact that Kansas City is in the World Series now, and tomorrow night is actually the first game of the World Series, it's them and the San Francisco Giants. Um... <clears throat> And basically, Cena just kind of stands up for the city and says that he wants Brock Lesnar, but he also wants to whip Orton's ass now. He said that he is going to be seeing Brock Lesnar in Randy Orton every single time he looks at his face at Hell in a Cell on Sunday. And the the whole thing, I, I actually really enjoyed seeing his promo here. It wasn't nearly as bad and corny as a lot of his stuff is. Um, but Orton was just so on point that I couldn't take anything away from him. But then we get another interruption. But before we talk about that, I want to let you vent, John. So go. This is my segment of the night. Oh, uh, really? I'm, I'm going to say it right now. I freaking loved this. Because, see, my segment of the night involved a different third man who was a surprise to everyone interrupting two already prominent stars that are going to be in a Hell in a Cell match on Sunday. And that was brilliant. And I, I, do, <laughs> I do not contend you at all for making that your favorite because there was a lot of great content on this show, to be fair. Why I love this so much, Ashton, I think you actually explained me better than I even could because of what you said about Orton. This was his most passionate promo, I think, ever. And what I loved about it the most for me is that underneath the veneer of, of the, the, the braggart and the cockiness and the arrogance, and I'm third generation, I think there's a man that's starving. I think he hates the fact that him and Cena have come up at the same time, done all these things, but he's the man of pedigree. I mean, it's in his blood, and yet Cena has surpassed him. He's the 15-time world champion. He's the poster boy. He's the guy that they claim, even though Orton has racked up a multitude of world titles. I'm not denying that. But commentary always defers to Cena as the greatest of all time. And I could just sense this, this feeling of hatred, of malice from Orton, that he was trying to pump himself up, but more and more, he needs this win. I think Orton sees this as a must-win situation, not because the winner gets Lesnar, but just to finally put it to bed that John Cena, I'm better than you. <laughs> and nothing can ever change it. That's why I loved it. 
I, I was telling a couple of friends, and you know I've told you multiple times, Ashton, and we've talked about it. It scares me how behind Orton I've been this year. It's been his year in terms of me and my fandom. Like, I want him to win at Hell in a Cell so bad. Like, after this promo, I am all in. I will be so pissed if Cena overcomes yet again because you know Orton Lesnar is a dream match for me. And, and after that promo, I just feel like he has had just some of the best work this year. And I, I just, I really love this. And Cena was great, too. I mean, not to take anything away from him. He, he wasn't corny. He kept serious face. They kept the energy at the same level, which I liked, because I felt like they were really doing something special. Uh, I like this build in this one week, now that we know this match is happening, better than most of the stuff they did leading up to TLC when the belts were being unified. Yeah. Um, so this was really great. And then we get that interruption, and now I can pass the ball back to you that I got that off my chest. And that interruption... His name is Paul Heyman, and this might have very well been my markout moment of the night, dude. I squeed like a little girl when I heard his voice, because it feels like it's been forever since he's been on TV. He reminds them that, oh, and that's another running theme that they had going on here. Randy Orton kind of reminisces about how, oh, back in 2002, I was the legacy, I was the third generation superstar, and John Cena was just some uh, Boston Mass thug who thought he could rap, and then Cena comes out and he says, oh, I want to live in the past, I'm Randy Orton, blah, 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 and talks about how stop living in the past, it's the present now, and I've done all this stuff, and you've done all that stuff, and mine is way bigger than yours, and all this crap. And then Paul Heyman comes out, and he's like, um, just so you know, you're uh, oh, what was the word that he used? Um, revisionist history makes me sick. That's what it was. He said the WWE's revisionist history really makes me sick. And he says that the class of 2002 was John Cena and it was Randy Orton. And it was also the next big thing hand selected by myself, the beast incarnate Barack Lesnar. And Heyman hypes up Lesnar and talks about how the winner of Cena Orton is really going to ultimately be the biggest loser because they have to step into the ring with the beast. He taunts Cena, but then Cena grabs him and goes for an attitude adjustment. But then he realizes that he's being a bully and he sets down Heyman gently before turning around into an RKO out of nowhere. Yeah, because Vine videos inspire. Yeah, he drops Cena where he stands. Eat that canvas, asshole. And then Paul Heyman's having a good laugh about it, thinking like, well, look at me. I avoided danger again. I'm the one behind 21 and one. Know your place. He's kind of reveling in all this. And Orton's like, well, after you. So it seems like the authority and uh, and Paul Heyman, we got some collusion going on. But, oh, wait. Orton spins Heyman around and he drops him with an RKO. And Orton is in the freaking zone. <sighs> Oh, God, dude, I want Orton Lesnar so bad. <laughs> I know you do. I know. And you know what, dude? Here's my thing. I was 100% sold on, well, Cena's going to win, and then we're going to get Orton Rollins. Until I learned this tiny little tidbit of a fact that hasn't necessarily changed my mind completely, but it's given me that shred of hope that I really need to get invested in this match. And that is that the Survivor Series pay-per-view is being held in Randy Orton's hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, I, I think that could be a big indicator. And here's the thing, dude. I understand that anything I look into, all of it is going to be tainted merely by my yearning for this match. But I feel like between Orton RKOing Heyman, Survivor Series being in his hometown, and what happened at the end of the night... I feel like Orton's walking away with this win, and he's just going to be built up as, as, again, just another guy. Can he do it? Can he topple Lesnar? Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like if it was ever going to happen, all the pieces are in place to do it now. The question is, is WWE going to give it that nod? Really hoping so. Man, this whole thing, just stupid. I know, right? Dude, how in the world did the WWE somehow manage to make us invested for Randy Orton versus John Cena again? I know. Dude, it's so funny you say it like that, too, because on Puitoff, I posted, because that's how much this segment just got me just 
juiced up beyond all levels. I, I said, that whole segment got me super pumped for Orton Cena this Sunday. I honestly do not care that they have faced off a billion times before. I want Orton versus Lesnar for the world title before the end of this year. If Damian Mizdow can pin Sheamus, I blah, 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 about Sandow, then Orton can beat Cena. And then I ended with, let's go RKO. So I am just all in for this match, and I never thought I would be. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's going to be another kind of run-of-the-mill Cena-Orton match. The worst thing is this isn't even their first Hell in a Cell match together. That is how stale this feud has gotten. And yet I am going to be cheering for Orton so freaking hard to win this match that it will honestly, it might even get to an embarrassing level on live reactions. Oh, it'll get an embarrassing level for me. I have no shame about it. I, I, I am embracing it, man. Like, oh, wait, if you have no shame, how is it embarrassing? Well, see, that's just I'm not going to have any shame like whatsoever. It's not going to be embarrassing whatsoever for me. And it, maybe it will be when I listen on playback because I always listen in the moment. And sometimes I know, like, I'll think back and I'll be like, wow, did I really react that way to that? But you know what? Screw it. It's Orton and we are this close now to Orton Lesnar. This close. <laughs> and we're also this close to Cena Lesnar 3 and Orton Rollins. <laughs> That can take the entirety of my balls in its mouth. That's what that match can do. Okay? Oh my because God. we are this close to Orton Lesnar, and I will kill a bitch for it. I will. All right. All right. Uh, up next was Rusev versus Big E. And this, I almost made this a heat of the night completely separately, because this match was over. Rusev hit a huge spinning heel kick on Big E, and then we cut to commercial. And during the commercial... I want you to know, I watched this on the app, and during the commercial, Rusev was literally standing over Big E, so he, all he had to do was crouch down and put Big E's arms over his knees, and he would have been in the accolade. He was in that position, and all he did was do the jump and then hit Big E in the back with his butt thing twice, and then he went in for like some kind of a weird modified sleeper. It looked like he was trying to pull off Samuel Shaw's finisher from TNA. And then we come back from commercial, and he locks in the accolade for the win within 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would have been a bit annoyed if they did an app finish, but considering how much they dragged it out, I actually would have preferred the app finish. Go figure. Um, and nothing more to say than that. I think Ashton's review was on point. I have nothing to add. I mean, WWE, you have an app. You could have had a chance to plug it, and you didn't take it. Me confused. So, there you go. Yeah, so... After the match, Lana cuts a promo talking about how Big Show's a coward and he's going to fail all the Americans at Hell in a Cell. She says that he's not an American hero and that he belongs in a circus where people throw half-eaten food at him and he sits in his own excrement. And then Rusev, Rusev says he's going to rip Big Show's heart out and that um, he says that fans are going to despise Big Show when he fails them, just like Mark Henry and Jack Swagger did. And then Lana tells us to rise for the real red, white, and blue uh, but the Russian flag doesn't drop down, and they're all upset about it. And then the big show appears on screen with this big shitty and grin on his face, and the American flag drops down instead. And this is where the whole thing happens, where Rusev goes to tear the flag down, and the the planted U.S. soldier rushes the ring, and security meets him, and they get freaking medical staff on him, because that's realistic, because I'm sure that if you had a jumper, that the first thing you would do is tend to his wounds. No, you would get him freaking arrested and thrown out, and then they'll take care of the hospital crap from there. But this was my heat of the night, so I don't really want to talk about it. John, if you have anything left to say, say it, and then we can move on. No, man, you summed it up perfectly. Let's move on. All right. Uh, up next, we had Dean Ambrose, and this was hilarious. Dean Ambrose backstage watching See No Evil 2 eating popcorn, and John Cena walks in, and Ambrose says, what do you mean? I'm doing I'm doing research, man. We're we're going against Kane tonight. We got to know what we're going against. He's horrifying in this movie, and uh, Ambrose is just being like really overly kind of comical, and like it's not even like he's going for like goofy Cena jokes. Like, <laughs> do you see what I did there, folks? He's actually doing like <laughs> legit improvisational comedy, and it's great. <laughs> what are you? I'm, freaking so, out I'm about? sorry, that voice impression was so good. <laughs> Oh, man, uh, that was Saturday night morning cartoons, just like a huge flashback for me, I'm sorry. But, right. uh, but, well, but yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, um, Ambrose tries to calm Cena down and says there's no problem for the main event. And one of my favorite lines here, Ambrose goes, you know, even though 
I don't have much experience with Hell in a Cell. I am undefeated at contract on a pull matches, so I think I know what to do here. <laughs> so good. The delivery is just brilliant. And then he says, we're going to hit anybody that gets near us. And if, if they do take us down, we're going to take them as many of them down with us as we can. And it was just awesome because Ambrose is just amazing. So, hey, there you go. Yeah, this whole segment was terrific. I love how Cena doesn't even know what to make of Ambrose. Uh, just Ambrose kind of leaves him in a state of somewhat like confusion and whatnot, which was great. And then Cena even came right out and said, you know, you, you say you're the Batman, but that's just not right. I mean, you're more like the Joker. Yeah. And then he just leaves Ambrose to watch Cena evil, too. Great and then stuff. Ambrose goes, why so serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for, uh, for pointing that out, because I, I would have glossed over that. So yeah, really fun segment. Ambrose continues to prove why, in my opinion, he's the top babyface in the company right now. So good, just so on point. Nothing more to say than that. 